On the 16th of March, 1935, Hitler called for the reintroduction of conscription to the German armed forces in light of his ambitious rearmament plans. The process of conscription was to be done at military recruiting offices all around the country under the orders of the Oberkommando der Wehrmacht, or High Command of the Armed Forces. Once a soldier received their registration notice, they would head to a recruitment centre where they would be given a Wehrpass or military pass that they would keep until they were under active duty. When the soldier eventually came under active military service, he would then exchange his Wehrpass at the recruitment office for a new document, a soul book or pay book. The exchange Wehrpass would be kept by the recruitment office who would record the soldier's active service. This would remain the case unless the soldier was killed, where the Wehrpass would be given to a member of the soldier's family as a memento. There were three variants of the Wehrpass during the Third Reich. The first variant was issued from 1934 to 38, the second variant from 1938 to 45, and the third variant from 1942 to 45. The contents of the three Wehrpasses remained fairly similar, with there being only a few minor differences, like the third Wehrpass having additional information on the soldier's medical training. However, the easiest way to distinguish between the three variants is by looking at the front of the Wehrpass. The first variant has an eagle with downward wings and a gothic script. The second variant has an outstretched eagle and a gothic script, while the third variant has the same design as the second one, but in a plain printed script instead of the gothic script. So here's an example of a first variant Verpass that belonged to Karl Schädlich, who was in the 19th Panzer Division. Now you can instantly tell that this is the first variant, with it having the eagle with the downward wings, compared to the outstretched ones of the second and third variant. Also, you can clearly see that it is labelled here, or for the army, and this is clear at the bottom. And obviously for the Luftwaffe, we'd have Luftwaffe and Kriegsmarine for the Navy. So before I get into showing you the Verpass, I just want to make clear that I do not speak German. And so I had to use Google Translate and other translation tools online to uh, translate what was written in here. And so I just want to make clear that it might not be 100% accurate and there could be a few mistakes within it. Um, obviously, it will get the general gist of things anyway. But if anyone does speak German in the comments down below, could you please uh, let me know if I've made any mistakes or if there's anything else that I haven't been able to translate which you understand. It would be much appreciated. Right, so let's open the first page of this fair pass and I'm wearing gloves because it is quite delicate. Now, obviously we have in Halt, as you can read there, which is contents. So firstly, we have personal information on page three, registration and conscription on page five, Reich Labour Service on page eight, active military service on page 11, military service on leave on page 36, and provisions on page 52. Below that, it states that the Verpass has 52 pages, and below that, it has a warning, which says counterfeiting and improper use of the service card will be punished under legal provisions of SS 26770 RST GB. So on the first page of this Verpass, we can see his military number at the top, Cannot read that first part there, but we have FR 75-14-35-69. Below that, we can clearly see his name, Karl Schädlich. Below that, we would have had his civilian general ID and his civilian employment workbook number, but both of them are not filled out. Then at the bottom, we can see the location where the Verpass was originally filled out and the date of it. This one, I believe, says Freiburg and the 15th of June, 1937, of course, where it has been signed off as well. On the third version of this one, there would be another section for his Erkundungsmarker, which is his identification tag numbers. I think I might have butchered that name. Anyway, second page of the Verpass here, if I can get it open. Here. Now, I don't want to touch this because I don't want it to get ruined, but here we have the photo of him. There's Karl Schädlich there. And below that, we have his signature. So. On the third and fourth page of the Verpass, we have his personal information. Now at the top, we can see his family name, Schädlich, his first name, Karl, and then his middle name, Reinhardt. Below that, we've got his birthday, which is the 22nd of December, 1914. Below that, we've got his birthplace. Now I believe it says Baron Grimmer, Germany, which is near Leipzig, small town or village near Leipzig. Below that, we've got his nationality, where it says Deutsches Reich. Then below that, we've got his religion there, and I believe it says no. And then his marital status, which I believe says that he got married on the 29th of March, 1941. Followed by his occupation there, 
and finally his parents' names and their occupations and we can see that his dad actually died in 1931. Now on the fourth page the personal information continues with his school training at the top and it says something about middle maturity I believe. Then below that we've got foreign languages spoken which is very interesting he spoke English and French and then obviously German as well. The twelfth part here we have his occupational or athletic qualifications and we can see it says something about being a free swimmer so he can clearly swim and obviously the other information is quite hard to see I cannot read that really if anyone knows please comment down below and then finally oh, the last part is just any additional notes where it actually has his address on this version so on page five it states whether the person was a volunteer or conscript here we can clearly see that Carl was a volunteer. Below that we have uh, the military district command unit and consulate. And I believe it actually says flax personnel, which is anti-aircraft personnel, followed by J or I dot R 75. And any other part I cannot actually understand after that there. And then of course the date here, which is followed by 14th of April, 1935. Below that we have his fitness level. In this case, he was fit, as you can see here and his service status once again, which I believe is flax personnel, J or I, R, 75. So moving on to page 11, because this is where the next part of information is, the other parts aren't filled out. We can see here at the top, we've got his recruitment examination. This was on the 14th of April, 1935. This is followed by his medical verdict, which is fit. Then the recruitment day, which is the 1st of November, 1935, as well as his posting after that, which once again is what I believe is anti-aircraft personnel, uh, 75. And the other part I cannot understand, as I said before. Below that, it says something like service time counts, which is 1st of November 1935. I believe that's when his service will begin. And then at the bottom, it says that he was sworn in on the 7th of November 1935. So moving on to page 12. Now from page 12 to 15, it includes a list of the person's active service in either the HEAR, Army or Luftwaffe Air Force. It lists his unit, date and roster number. So as we can see here, these are a list of his affiliation with army agencies, and he had four, which you can clearly read here. Quite hard to understand, but we can see the dates uh, from, until, uh, and we can see the numbers and list at the end. So moving on to page 20 of the Verpass here, we can see that it includes the information on the training that a soldier received for certain weapons. Now here we can see that Carl received training on the Carabiner 98K, or Car 98K, the Pistola 08, or Luger, and the Steel Handgranate, or Hand Grenade. On page 21, we can see that we have some special military schools that he attended, which is quite hard to understand, and so I can't translate that. If anyone knows, please comment down below. And then on the third version of the Verpass, there would be another section on the bottom of page 20 that would include an additional skill section. And on the bottom of page 21, there would be another section for any med medical training that the soldier had. Pages 22 to 23 are for any promotions and appointments that the soldier had. With the first two versions of the Verpass having another section at the bottom of page 23 for awards and decorations. So here you can see on here, very hard to read, but some of the dates and of course what all the decorations and appointments are, or promotions as I say, there. And then some of the um, decorations at the bottom of the page here. Now, moving on to page 24. This contains the soldier's date of discharge and other details like his final rank and location of release. So here we can see he was dismissed on the 30th of September 1937 as a graffiti of the reserve to Mines Bretzenheim, I believe, from Flax personnel, and then obviously the numbers. Suitability for, and this has been crossed out, personnel roster and rankings list number 69, type of dismissal, I believe it says after fulfilling the act of duty, medical discharge verdict, I cannot quite read, and he was transferred to mines, I believe. Page 25 has the information about his post-service details, like his occupation, as well as at the bottom of the section explaining that the soldier has been instructed about espionage, counter-espionage, treason, maintaining official secrecy and military surveillance, as well as a warning that if this was not abided by, there would be harsh penalties. In this case, he was instructed about these rules on the 29th of September 1937, and it was of course signed off as well. 
Then from pages 26 to 27, there are some additional notes pages, as you can read here, very hard to understand, but there are some additional notes. Now, for what I believe is the most interesting two pages in the whole book, we have pages 32 to 33, in which the first two versions of the Verpas list the battles and campaigns that the soldier was part of. Now this is shown with a day, month and year, as well as the location, etc. Now, here we can see on page 32 some of the battles and uh, campaigns that Carl took part in. At the top it has some writing which I can't quite read, however the bottom has been printed and added on, which I can read. Now at the top, the main highlighted parts, we've got use in the Western Front's area of operations. Below that, we've got breakthrough battle of the English Channel. Then C, we've got Battle of Flanders and Artois, Artois or something. Then D, at the uh, bottom there, Schlacht in Frankreich. This is Battle in France. E, Occupation in France. And F, Securing the Demarcation Line. Then on page 33, we have the same. Now, this one on page 33 seems to be Eastern Front. Of course, we've got some more writing at the top, handwriting, but then below that, we've got, I'll read the highlighting again, double battle at Bialstok and Minsk, battle of the Dnieper and Duna, battle at Slomensk, defensive battle at Yelna and Smolensk, battle of Velikiluki, I believe, <laughs> pursuit battles against the Upper Duna, transfer to Army Group North in the area of Scholm, battle of Loat and Pola, Transfer back to Army Group Center in the area of Smolensk and use an operational area. Fight in the forest area. Transfer back Army Group Center in this uh, area of, south of Smolensk and used an operational area. This is repeated again, which was talked about in point nine. Double battle at Vyasma and Bryansk. And finally, advance against Moscow. So very interesting. Um, of course, there are some smaller parts within the main highlighted part, but I haven't translated those. But very, very interesting, you know, we've got him taking part in the advance against Moscow, him being transferred to Army Group North, and then back to centre again. So very, very interesting page. And if there are some parts that I haven't translated at the top here, uh, it would be much appreciated if you could comment down below them. Now, page 34 lists the wounds that the soldier sustained and also any other illnesses during wartime. You can read that. And page 35 is for any additional medical information, often about how fit the soldier was for service, for example, if he was fit for combat. However, it is also often written if the soldier was killed and it is noted and dated on this page. And clearly we can see here, it says Gefallen, or, and that means that Carl died on the 22nd of what seems to be October, 1941, as you can read there. Page 36 in the first two versions of the Verpass lists when the person was transferred to either the Reserve, Landwehr or Landsturm. And here we can see that Carl was transferred to the Reserve on the 4th of October 1937 to the Military Registration Office in Mainz. Pages 37 to 38 have additional space for any promotions and appointments with the bottom of page 38 having another section for additional awards not shown in the previous pages. And here we can see that Carl was actually awarded the Iron Cross Second Class on the 18th of August 1941 and the Panzer Assault Badge in bronze on the 18th of August 1941. Now I actually have his citation for the Panzer Assault Badge in bronze, as you can see here, Unter Offizier Karl Schädlich, his uh, troop unit, and there we can clearly see Panzer Assault Badge in bronze, which was awarded on the 18th of the August 1941 in the field and of course signed off there, clearly showing the 19th Panzer Division. Really, really nice to have with the Verpass. Pages 41 to 45 had all the dates and stamps for the recruitment office that the soldier had to report to. Now we only have one on here on page 41 for Carl, and we can see once again that he had to report to the military registration office in Mainz since the 4th of October, 1937. Now, if we skip forward a little bit here to page 46 of the Verpass, which I'll get to now. We can see that it, it lists the equipment that the soldier had. Now we can clearly see that for Carl, his gas mask number was two, 
for his helmet, 55, his cap, 54, and his boots, 28 slash 6. And then I believe at the bottom there, it talks about his blood group as well. And finally, at the bottom of this page, we just have some room for additional notes if needed. So the last page of the Verpass, page 52, essentially just goes through all the provisions about the book, talking about the importance of the pass, who or where the pass can be handed to, and where you shouldn't take the pass, for example. As you can read here, all the provisions about the book. Now, as you can see on the back here at the bottom, we can see that this one was made in Berlin. So thanks a lot for watching the video today. If you did enjoy, please consider liking and subscribing and also have a look at some of the other videos on my channel as you might find them interesting. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next one.